a handmade personalized family portrait. Could there be a better gift? That is the exact project I'm gonna walk you through today as we use watercolor and ink to create these doodle family portraits. Hello, my friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell, and today I have a really exciting tutorial to share with you. A few weeks ago, I shared on my Instagram Reels that I did this family portrait as a Christmas gift for my mom last year, and so many of you wanted to see how I created it, and you wanted to make one too, I hope. So that's exactly what we're going to do today, and here's what you'll need to do it. Scrap paper, pencil and pen, and an eraser. Uh, grab some tracing paper, mine is just from the dollar store. And then beyond that, you want your watercolor supplies like watercolor paper, a set of paints, and a couple small brushes. And you'll want some pictures of the people that you are going to draw. Now, the one I did for my mom had my whole extended family. It was a huge undertaking. I'm such a good daughter. But this one, for this one, I'm just going to make a family portrait of Sullivan, our son, and Chris and I. And so I've got a few photos here. I really like the way I'm holding Sully in this one. So I'm thinking that one and then the way Chris is kind of leaning in in this other one I can sort of amalgamate those two and it's nice to have the photos right here sitting on my desk so I can look at the way our bodies are placed and really refer to these photos as I'm drawing now I'm going to start by drawing me and Sully and before we get into illustrating, I'll just mention that I do have a worksheet available to help you through the process of drawing people that's in my Patreon storefront. You can get it, it's just four bucks, or you can sign up and become a member of my Patreon for $3 a month or $33 for an entire year. And as we begin to draw people, just don't be scared. We're basically gonna draw stick figures. We want these to look really doodly. So I start with two circles for the heads, ovals, we'll say. And then I kind of work out the appendages like arms and legs by just putting uh, lines. You know, there's two lines for Sullivan's arms. And then I've got one line going through his body. That's my arm holding him. And we'll put a little mitt on the end of that line to show that my hand is there. Uh, give me a neck. And then I've got a curved line for an arm here. Put a little mitt on the end of that line. And then you can always thicken up the arms if you want. We'll put two lines for Sullivan's legs and two little ovals for feet. Same thing for me, two long lines and little ovals for feet. So we do stick figures and then we sort of thicken things up. We begin sketching in, like I sketched in my t-shirt sleeve, thickened up my arm a little bit, thickened my legs ever so slightly, put some little pants on Sully, and then I kind of did a line across my forehead where my bangs are. And I'll do the same thing, Sally's little curly whirlies. But before I add too many details to our heads and faces, let's get close. I erase my bangs because I want to say, to begin a face, it's good to put a cross right through the center. Then the eyes go on that middle line and the ears are always in line with the eyes. And then, you know, just put two dots for the nose. You put a little smile. That's all we're doing. These are doodle, portraits. <laughs> These are fun, cutesy portraits. So the cross, and then do the eyes and ears on that center line, two little uh, dots for the nostrils, and a tiny little smile or a little pucker or whatever you want to do for someone's mouth. Let's go over these in pen. So grab a fine liner. We'll start with Sully's little eyes and two dots for the nose. For the hair, we'll just put some messy little lines. Um, kids tend to have quite round faces, so I'm making sure that his overall face shape is pretty, pretty round, pretty circular. And then I'm starting to add some detail, like thickening up his sleeves. Um, I'm just doing little mitt shapes for everyone's hands. I'm thickening up my arms a little bit, but remember, doodle people. <laughs> We're not going for a lot of detail here. So feet and shoes are just ovals, hands are mitts, faces are like dots for eyes, a, a curving line for the smile. Legs and arms start as lines and then you thicken them up a bit. For hair, I'll do some little wavy lines, you know, the 
general shape of someone's haircut. And there we have Sullivan and Shada, me. And now we wanna add Chris to this family portrait. So I'm gonna base it on this one where he's sort of leaning in and he's gonna have his arm around me and Sully. And we're gonna start the same way with an oval for the head. And then we'll just put a stick where his sort of torso is. We can give him a neck and we'll do lines. So there's a sort of bent line for his arm. And then the other line, the other arm is kind of behind me and two lines for the legs, ovals for the feet. And then we start thickening everything up. We'll add to those legs. We'll thicken this arm, add a mitt for that hand, and then kind of square off that shoulder a little bit. And then speaking of square, when I do doodle portraits, I really like to exaggerate face shapes. So I have a very round face, so I'll do like a perfect circle for my face. For men, I'll tend to do like a more square face. <laughs> Chris has got kind of funny there. So his face is very angular. I'm putting his hair for his beard. I just go straight across two little nostrils, and then uh, I'm doing his round glasses there and just trying to, to work all that out. Don't forget to do your grid if that helps you keep those eyes and ears along the same grid line. And yeah, if for men, you can do kind of a very squared off jaw or a really long rectangle if someone has a longer face, or you can do a very heart-shaped face for a woman. You know, just exaggerating those features of someone can really help the doodle portrait come to life. And then once you're happy with your uh, doodle portrait, we're gonna take that tracing paper and we are going to refine our sketch. And the nice thing about the trace is that it allows you to keep what you like about your drawing, change what you don't. Um, you know, you can move things around a little bit. If someone got a little bit tall or short, you can make their legs a little shorter. Or if you wanted Chris to be edged in a little more, you can just, you know, slightly move the paper paper so that um, you're placing everything just where you want it to be. And it just allows you to really get confident with your illustration doing that trace. So there, you can see what my trace looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a few things I think that I could change. And the nice thing about tracing paper is that you can do as many traces as you need to. So I just want to perfect this a little bit more. There's a couple small things I want to work on to make sure that everybody's looking their best. Um, and so do trace it as many times as you need to, to, to get things looking right. Because people, even when we're doing things really simplified like this, people are tricky to draw and um, tracing really will help you and help you to build your confidence. Remember, there's a worksheet to help you with all of this. Head to patreon.com slash Shada Campbell to sign up and support the channel monthly or just purchase the worksheet in my Patreon storefront. Okay, I'm almost done my second trace here, just finishing up with my face. I'm gonna lift up that trace so you can see the final sketch and it looks good. I love the way we're tightly clustered together. It's going to make for a really great portrait. So with the illustration done, let's put away all the illustration supplies and get set up with all of our watercolor supplies. So I've got my paints, some brushes and 140 pound hot pressed watercolor paper. I'm taping the trace in the center of the page and then I'm taking a piece of graphite transfer paper, placing it dark side down like a little sandwich between the watercolor paper and the tracing paper. And I'm going to take a nice sharp implement like a mechanical pencil, and I'm going to trace over the entire illustration. And you can see the graphite transfer paper transfers it really beautifully. You wanna just check that you didn't miss anything before you take that tape off. And then there we go. You can also transfer your image by simply putting a layer of graphite on the back of the tracing paper. If you don't have um, that graphite tracing paper, just put some pencil on the back and that'll be another way for you to transfer. And then I am starting uh, by mixing up a little bit of a uh, flesh, Caucasian flesh tone. And I've just mixed uh, like a jaune brilliant with a little bit of white, little bit of raw sienna. 
And I'm taking a small round brush, something like a number four or six is great for something of this size. And at this point, it's like you're just coloring in, but with paints. You know, you've got this image, this illustration already transferred, and you just have to start adding some color. So it's really a fun and very chill process at this point. These really do make the sweetest and most thoughtful holiday gifts. There's only one gift that I think could be possibly better, and that would be a Shada Campbell e-course. Watercolor illustration, I even have a live workshop on watercolor and illustration. They're all available at shadacampbellcourses.com. And right now, if you use code BLACKFRIDAY23, you can save 30% site-wide. All right, so now we have to decide what color our clothes are going to be. Now, you can just go based on the photographs, but you also want to think of it as a cohesive color palette. Say you're doing this for your own family portrait, you're going to hang it in your home. You want to think about what colors do I want hanging in the home? What colors will look good together? So I'm going to sort of go for reds and blues and greens, like real primary colors. So I am following the clothing that I'm wearing. I did nice a nice sort of cobalt blue for my jeans, and then I did red stripes on my shirt. Having at least one person wear something that has a bit of pattern, I think is, is nice. You could do someone in polka dots or flowers or stripes, and the pattern does not have to be perfect. You can make it quite silly and doodly. Uh, I'm changing Chris's pants color. We're all sort of wearing denim. It's going to be way too much denim, so I'm changing his pants to a nice dark olive green. It's still something he would totally wear, so I'm kind of staying true to his wardrobe. <laughs> um, but now I've incorporated some green, and again, I'm going with sort of a primary and basic secondary colors color palette here. Uh, I forgot to paint Chris's neck and his hand, <laughs> so we'll just paint that in, add a little color there. And then Chris is going to be wearing a white t-shirt, so I just mixed a little French gray. And we're basically just going to paint uh, some shadow. So just doing some splotches of gray on this his side, around the armpits, where Sullivan is in front of him, it might cast a little bit of a shadow. So, you know, really just putting a little splotches of paint, it helps to give the look that, you know, that t-shirt isn't flat, the fabric has ripples and that sort of thing. And uh, we'll still make sure there's lots of white areas left showing through so that it, it looks like it is a white t-shirt or a very, very light gray t-shirt. Okay, let's keep coloring in. I mixed a bit of red brown, and so just added a little bit of water to my red brown cake of paint. And I'm using that brown to color in my hair. It's always good to have a little bit of negative space showing through so you can see, you can see a little bit of white paper showing through my hair. That just gives the painting this really lively quality. I'll use the same color of brown for Chris's hair and just fill in. Again, just leaving some little dots of negative space can be nice. I did his beard a slightly lighter brown. I just had a little less paint in the brush, a little more water, and it gives a nice lighter effect. I'm using a bit of French gray again on our shoes. We're both gonna be wearing white shoes, so we just need to add like a little bit of shading, basically leaving lots of white showing through. Okay, now that a lot of this has started to dry, and I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't really sure what color to make Sullivan's jumper, so I decided to do a bit of shading. Remember I said keep things light, you know, if you're doing uh, jeans, just go for a nice medium blue, and then you can come back in with a darker blue. So in this case, I mixed more indigo into my blue, and I am adding just a little bit of shading, really around the crotch, in between the legs, you know, anywhere that a bit of shadow would hit. I did the same thing for Chris's pants. I used a little bit of Naples yellow to color in Sullivan's hair. And I also put a little bit of burgundy on my t-shirt where my arm is sitting across the t-shirt there. So adding a bit of shadow goes a long way. 
Time to start adding some color, color to Sullivan here. I am going to make his shoes pink. He has a pair of pink sparkly rain boots that he wears everywhere. So I will make his little Crocs pink <laughs> for this portrait. And then I've decided to make his jumpsuit blue, but I'll just use a different blue than what I used on my jeans. So I'm using the color light blue from my Muno set and we'll just fill in. Use a small brush if you need to. I'm using a number six here and just follow those lines. Things don't have to be perfect. Leave a little negative space showing through. That always looks good and uh, keep it light. You can build up a darker color and texture and shadow in layers with watercolor. For example, I'm doing a little wet into wet. I've just come in with a slightly more concentrated paint and I'm adding some shadow sort of in his armpits there and across the base of my arm. So my arm casts a little bit of a shadow onto his lower body. And I think that looks pretty good. What I'm doing now is mixing a little bit of pink into that peachy tone that I used for our skin. And so I've got a nice light peachy pink and I'm just going to add some little rosy cheeks. Um, for men, I tend to add a little less pink and just do a darker peach. Of course, this is Caucasian skin I'm talking about. You can do this for any skin tone. Just basically mix something a little darker than what you used for the, for the flesh. And then uh, mine was a bit dark, so I'm using a wet brush to just blend it out slightly and lift some of the color because mine, mine was a little intense. We don't want it like clown makeup. We just want to give people a little rose cheek and then we let it dry let that dry completely and once it has this is the best step we're gonna take a fine liner I love these um, a lot of black liners they're really easy to use they're um, permanent and light fast and waterproof so if you wanted to use more water color on top later you can but take a fine liner and we are going to do that nice sketchy black line so all of those lines that you transferred if you can still see them in some places like say Chris's glasses or our mouths that's good because we are actually adding an entire sort of illustration to this watercolor painting and we're just going to add little details like shoelaces and the eyes and mouths and you can add you know some more sketchy lines on the clothes clothing to give it further creases, add some little wavy lines in the hair to give the hair more texture. So yeah, doing the entire sketch here and it just brings the entire um, painting and illustration to life and it really fits in with that doodle quality of the doodle portraits, you know, to have the pen illustration finish everything off. I love the way these look. This would make such a great Christmas present um, for people in your family or your your friends or anyone that's welcomed a new member to the family recently this makes a great a great gift and yeah especially for moms and dads and um, people with kids basically <laughs> this is a great present so uh, the pen lines do not have to follow the paint exactly that little bit of negative space showing through I'm telling you it's such a you know good artistic quality a good little tip so there we go my sketchy line Lines are in place. At this point, I'm just looking for any small finishing details, few lines on Chris's beard, little holes in Sally's Crocs. And yeah, I love the way this looks. I will say, I think I need a little more shading on some of the skin. So I'm gonna grab those watercolors and I like to add a line of darker color kind of sitting right underneath our faces, um, sometimes right on our arms where like your t-shirt hangs over your arm. Yeah, just those small details go a long way. Remember, you can get a worksheet helping you to draw these doodle portraits. That is available on Patreon. You can sign up. It's just three bucks a month or $33 for an entire year of bonus content, plus five years of backlog of bonus content. Or if you don't like subscriptions, I get it. You, I now have a Patreon storefront. You can buy the worksheet. It's just $4. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I really hope some of you will do these and give them as holiday gifts this year. That would be so cool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.